All right. So this, mo- this morning, I want to talk to you about a very simple teaching. Our Thanksgiving is a game changer. Our Thanksgiving is a game changer. So um, our Thanksgiving is a game changer. I want you to turn your Bible to Mark chapter 4. And it's going to be a brief service because we've spent a lot of time worshiping the Lord. And in Mark chapter 4, Jesus Christ taught in parables. And parables are simple things you can use to teach very deep on eternal truth. So we call them parallel. So Jesus will say, um, there is a door, but it's not really a door. It's talking about divine access. So Jesus talked about this parable about the seed and the soil. Jesus actually said, this parable is the key. It's like the front door key to other things. It says, if you don't understand this concept in the Bible, you will never understand all the things he taught. He said so in Mark chapter 4, showing how powerful that parable is. And in this parable, two things were significant. There was a sower, there was a seed, and there was a heart. So he shared the parable with the audience, but he didn't tell them what it meant. So all of a sudden, the disciples came together and said, Sir, what did it mean? You said it meant so much. What did it mean? I, wanted to, I want us to read verse, verse 11. The Bible says, And he said unto them, this is what he said, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to them that are not inside, all things are done in parables. So just Christ says, first of all, what I want to tell you is a mystery. There are mysteries in the kingdom of God. What are mysteries? Mystery means pass worded secrets. That's what it means. Pass worded secrets. You know, so the reason why you pass what something is because Number one, what you pass, what you don't pass, what useless things you pass, what precious things, yes or no? Good, but the reason why you also pass what is that because you know that some people will have want to have access that they should not have what access. So that's why you put a password on your phone because on your phone there's your banking details, there is your email, there's your private pictures, there's secrets on your phone. You don't want someone to say, So God says, Hey, I have all the secrets, and what I do is that I put a password on it. So this is a big deal. It says, So you it's given to know the mission of the kingdom of God. It, it says, Okay, so let's keep, go on. He says that they see, and it says the other people that don't have the password, that they see they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted. Uh, it, says, it says the problem, that this is the thing, once you have password, you're going to have access. He said so, because, because they are not qualified to have access, I put a password. The reason why is that once they have the password, they're going to have access. He says they will be converted. They will have transformation. They will have access. Why am I saying so? God says this, and this is what you said. He said, there's a password. I know you've been wanting some things. I don't be praying about something, but there's a password. There's a whole concept. He says, he says, when the lady that is believing God for her husband gets this password, she's going to get married. When the one that is believing God for a promotion gets this password, he's going to get his promotion. When, when, the, one that, when the one that seems as if life is difficult gets this password, everything will change. So someone says, wow, what is this password? And that's what I want to read right now. Then he began to say something. He said, number one, I told you the parable. This is the middle of the parable. He said, firstly, the soul was so with the seed. He said, in the password combination, there is a word. That the word is the major instrument for transformation. But it brings down the concept. What's the other concept? It says, it says in verse 15, And these are they which by the wayside, where the word is sown, it says, And when they've heard the word, Satan comes immediately and take it away from them, from that which was sown in their heart. It says, the second thing is this. This is very powerful. It says there's a word. But the soil I spoke about was not the literal soil. The soil I spoke about was the heart of man. He said, if the, this is a powerful combination. He said, if you're going to have testimonies result in your life, if you're going to pray and see that fine funding come through, he says, if you're going to pray and see that change you want in your marriage, if you're going to pray and see that medical testimony come through, if you want to change and see that increase, he said, what's going to happen is this. There's going to be two parts to it. There's going to be the word and there's going to be the soul, which is the heart. Wow. Why is the heart powerful? Because I understand the word is powerful and you can go back to what I taught on Wednesday and read about and watch it on YouTube. But why is the heart powerful? Because this is what it is. Every blessing and every crisis is first in the heart before it's outside. The Bible says, let's, let's read something. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. Let's read this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. 
See what the Bible says. Hey, it says, be careful. It says, keep your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. It says, the issues you have in your life are not first external. The issues you have in your life are first what? Internal. What does it mean? The limit in your finances is not first external. The limit is first internal. The limit on you getting married is not first what? External. The limit is first internal. The problem is this. We try to fix internal limit by doing external things. No, sir. You fix the limit by fixing the inside. So the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. So, you know, you know, the other day a lady called me that was single, you know, about 40, and I was trying to understand the pressure she was under. And one of the things I noticed is this. I said, what are your best friends? And she said, all oh, my friends are single, divorced people, or all those people. I said, why do you have those kind of friends? You know why? When you want marriage and all your friends are single, or people that are divorced, or don't believe in marriage, they will keep talking to you, and it goes into your heart. And when it goes into your heart, it comes out that way. So what God wants to do sometimes is that when he wants to change the state of your heart, he changed the state of people around you so that something else can get into your heart. Who did he do that for? He did that for Elizabeth. Uh, he did that for Mary rather. When Mary said, I can't get pregnant. He said, let me put you around someone that has had a miracle. Why? In seeing a miracle, in hearing a miracle, you can believe for your miracle. Stop surrounding with people that kill your faith. Stop surrounding yourself rather with people that kill your faith. Stop surrounding yourself as a businessman with people that are not ahead of you and tell us you it can be done stop surrounding yourself with people that say we all have pcos this is our life destiny stop surrounding yourself with people that say we all can get pregnant we all can have a child the country is too hard surround people surround yourself with people that carry your future when you see them when mary saw when mary saw elizabeth he was obvious that something lived mary said my god i need to get pregnant but you are carrying the baby i can see my future in you the heart is very important this is how the heart works like a remote if I want to turn on the if I want to turn on a generator an AC bam I turn on the AC if there are no batteries in it what will happen God says the way your heart is is this if you want to fix something on the outside don't struggle on the outside see many of you are struggling where you should not struggle is a fix inside first. And what happens to our hearts is this. Because we use the remote often, the battery runs down. And what happens? The remote is not as effective as it used to be. Do you know there are many hearts like that? You know, and what does the Bible call this? The Bible calls it the hardness of heart. There are many people that, you know, they come to church, but they just can't really believe again that God can do it. They just don't believe again. You know, they, they come to church, they just don't believe again that it can get better. And the reason why is that they've tried financially, hit lo they lost money. Some of them, they just can't believe again that can get married. Some of them sincerely, you know, and, and listen, it's not a bad place. It, it, it's as if I'm accusing them. Just because of the reality of what they've been through. How do you encourage a woman that's been trying to get pregnant for 10 years that you'll get pregnant? Sometimes it's tiring. How do you tell a lady that's about 40, 45 and say, don't worry, you will get married? Sometimes it's tiring. So I'm not saying it's their fault. How do you encourage someone that's done 20 businesses and lost money? Someone sent me a message and they said, Pastor, this is the second year alone. I've lost 400 million. How do you encourage them? Sometimes it's so difficult. So because, because of the frequent use of the issues, because of the issues of life rather, the heart itself begins to lose its potency. It's just like soil. The Bible says the heart is soil. Do you know in agriculture, when you farm a land for a long time, they're going to tell you to leave it. Yes or no? Use it to what? To what? Recover. If you don't leave it to recover, what will happen? If you don't leave it to recover, two things can happen. You will either have a crop failure or you will have crops that are not what? Are not healthy. Have you wondered why you have prayer failure? Because your heart has become unhealthy. Have you wondered how come you have prayer failure? Because your heart has become unhealthy. That's why it seems as if everything is failing and it's from here. Because the heart needs to recover. You've gone through so many battles. You've gone through so many challenges. You've gone through so many things in business. You've got, gone against government, private sector, public sector, funding, staffing. You've gone and now your heart is just weak. And because your heart is weak, your heart is like soil. It cannot produce fully. The same thing with marriages. Most times when marriages are struggling, the simple things that your wife or your husband does becomes amplified. Not because of what they do, because your heart has just gone so weak, you can't tolerate anything again. 
And I'm saying so because, because we're in a difficult season in this year, a lot of people's hearts have gone weak. And God says, keep your heart with all diligence. Because a weak heart cannot produce a good life. This is, so this is what we're doing. We have the remote control. We're trying to change our life, but the battery is weak. We begin to fight the remote control. We press it. We press it. We press the remote control. Press the remote control. It's, it's not the. It's not the. See, it just needs to recharge. You just need to change the batteries. L -l 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 where are my shoes? L -l -l Let me show you. See, when you go through life, when you go through life, when you go through life. Brother, you, 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 you should have left the shoes where I left them. Now you've, you're doing the wrong thing. You. Okay, I don't know if I can use this example. Look at this shoe. Just because of wear and tear. The shoe should not be bent like this and all of those things. No. The shoe should be like standing. Right. Isn't that what it's meant to be? When your life goes through life, disappointment, heartbreaks, pain, shame, loss, inflation, deflation, government policy, delay, waiting for approvals, no answer prayers, all those kind of things, your heart is, becomes really so. And the problem is that once your heart is weak, it can produce because it's the soil. What will come from a weak heart will not be healthy. Formerly, this soil could produce huge cucumbers that were succulent, but the cucumbers are shrinking because the soil needs help. So what do you do if you want to keep the shoe? So this, this, is, what I do. this is my personal shoe. This is what I do. I get a, I get a, a shoe on and I put it inside like this. You know what I'm trying to do? Even though my heart is out of shape, I'm doing something that will bring it back to shape. The question today is that because you've waited a long time for a change, either to get married, in your business, in your finance, and your heart is out of shape, what are you doing to put your heart in shape? Because if your heart does not get in shape like the remote, you will be struggling, but the man will not come. You will be struggling, the wife will not come. You will be struggling, the breakthrough will not come. You will become, the approval will not come. What can you do? Psalm 67. Just one thing you have to do. Psalm 67. Glory to God. Psalm 67. This is good. How many of you know what I, what, 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 how many of you understand what I'm talking about? How many of you feel as if you need a hard touch right now? Eh. Because, because see, see, your heart, once your heart is out of shape, you, have you seen some shoes that are out of shape? You see, you just ask them, did you buy this? Is this the shoe that I know you bought? Because the shoe doesn't look like what it used to look like. Many of you, you are so out of shape that you cannot even dream. When you come to church and say, the rest of the year is the best of the year, you just say amen, but in your heart, you have zero expectation. Zero expectation. Why don't you join NLP? I've joined for three months. What happened? Because your heart is out of shape. You don't even have staying power. You don't even have staying power. You don't even have to stay. And let me tell you something. Hey, everybody look over here. This generation makes it seem as if once prayer doesn't happen in the day, God did not answer. Stop it. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says, follow those who through faith and patience received, obtained the promise. Sometimes when you've prayed, the next thing you need is patience. Don't because it didn't happen in two days. Say God is unfaithful. Jesus did not show up when Lazarus was sick. But he still showed up. Hallelujah. He may not have showed up when you wanted. But it's still a testimony. Say amen somebody. Listen to me. The biggest faith went to the biggest test. Don't tell me you have faith when your faith has not been tested. Oh, yeah, I've been praying to God for a brother now. One year, God, I've not seen anybody. Hey! hey! Come now! God bless you. T tell them, tell them. Be what? Be coming now. Because you are behaving as if you have another God somewhere else. Do it to let Satan know. Satan, this is not about miracle. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Are you here, somebody? Let's, let's read Psalm 67. Oh, wow. So when your, heart is, when your heart is that way, what, what do you do? Verse 6. And 
If you're online, it's blessing you. Let me know if you want to share with your friends online. Tell them to get in and let's share together. See what the Bible says. So this, so when your heart, the same I used to shoe on, I used to shoe, bring my shoe on back again. The same I used to shoe on to begin to correct my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the same I used to shoe on because you can see the shoe is bent here. I'm using the shoe on to correct my heart. My heart is so weak. I'm finding hard to believe I can get married. My heart is so weak. I'm fine to believe that my business will do well. I'm so weak on the instant. I'm finding to believe I can have a child. I'm fine to believe I can be healed. I'm finding so hard to believe I can make progress. I'm finding to believe that Nigeria can get better. I'm finding so hard to believe I can have the political position. I'm finding so hard to believe I can get my papers. I'm finding so hard to believe I can get my approval. When you find it hard to believe, what do you do? See what the Bible says. And nobody can say this better than David because David was told he would be a king at 16. Is it 16 or 18? I think 16 or 18. I'm not sure. He didn't become a king. He was anointed king at 18. He became king at 30. So, if someone has gone through a season where his heart was up and down, David is an expert. What did David say? Look at this. Verse 5, Psalm 67. Let the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Then what? Then the earth, the heart. He says, there's something about praise. It doesn't, see, you, they think you are dust on the outside. He said, the praise, this is the praise. It goes on the inside. And all the place where it's at lost contour, it has lost beauty. The praise begins to walk. It begins to walk. It begins to walk. It begins to walk. He says, let the people, he says, then the, the soul. But remember, the soul is what? Your heart from Mark chapter 4. Hey, I know you've given up, but it's something about praise. Praise is like water sprinkled on a tree cut in between. Then the tree will butt again. He says, the praise will go. Then it begins to come back alive. You know, I'm, I'm telling you this. Because many of you think you're praising God for himself. Nah! That's why when Jesus got into situations that was very difficult, like Lazarus too, Martha Mary closes of his friends, bodies, they said blaming him. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself cried! I could imagine the state of his heart. He said, before I say nonsense, what do I say? Father, I thank you. <laughs> Why did he say, Father, I thank you? Because there's some about Thanksgiving that corrects the state of the heart. This is what Thanksgiving does. <laughs> this is what Thanksgiving does. <laughs> it takes your attention off what is not done to what God has done. Hallelujah. Many of you are experts in knowing what God has not done. But you need to become a professor in what God has done. Listen to me. Let me tell you. Many of you are sitting down in church now and be like, you know, God has not done this. I'm not this. Keep, will you please keep quiet? You think I don't know your story? Were well, you not the same lady you used to go to Aswani? Bend down boutique. Oh, oh yeah. 500 now. Two for 500. Shake it, shake it, shake it. You go to um, where is Katangua. You know Katangua. <laughs> You know, Katanga, you, yeah, now you've forgotten. I want to remind you, you know, Katanga, this was you, you know, Nicha Abba. You will be walking in mistakes now. You, you know, say, uh, you know, if it's not good, you I don't wear. If it's not this, I don't wear. And you now say, God is not faithful. This was you that was looking for admission university. You walked up and down, up and down, jammed, jammed you so many times. But look at you today. This was, you. I'm telling you, look at what the Lord has done for you. You seem to have forgotten. You seem to have forgotten. <laughs> Many of you, I see you. You see, I've ordered my Uber. I know you. You didn't start with Uber. It was called Molue. <laughs> it was called Molue. <laughs> and you couldn't even get the sitting space. It was a standing space. When you enter the Molue, you will hang there <laughs> and hold it. <laughs> and they say, oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh. But see how far God has brought you. And you say, well, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I don't have that. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I know you, I know your story. Don't say, well, I didn't, I didn't go to Mullywell. But is it not you that will travel to London and you student pass because you could not, you were looking for how to cut short money every time? <laughs> same thing. Mullywell student pass, same thing. And look at how God has brought you. Was there no time you thought you would fail and your life was over? And God showed up. Listen to me. Thanksgiving has a way. So this is what happens. When a soil is not producing what it should produce, a great farmer says, let me what? What was the word? Let it lie fallow. Or what? Nourish it with what? Manure. 
What, how do you nourish your heart with praise? My brother, come. Do you have the tight clip? My brother, come. Quickly, please come. So, someone said, well, we thank God. He's for God. <laughs> that God needs our sentiment. Listen to me. The concept, just stay, just stay, just stay where you are. Thank you. The concept of God, just for your me. The concept of God forbids him to need, to need anything. Because the word God in the Hebrew, when it says in Genesis 1, let, let, let God says Elohim. It means a self-existent one that does not need support or help. This is what Thanksgiving does. This is you. You're like this tie. The wind of life blows. You lose money. You lose job. I thought I would get married. This is what Thanksgiving does. Thanksgiving anchors you. It's not see the wind does not blow. There is an anchor here. That's what the Bible says when Abraham was waiting. And Abraham was shaking, shaking, shaking. He said, how will I anchor? He said, and Abraham was strong in faith, given glory to God. Thanksgiving hand calls you. Do you know why you're depressed? Because you don't have an anchor. Do you know why you find it hard to believe? Because, because Thanksgiving is not what you do because he has done something. It's a lifestyle. I do Thanksgiving for the state of my heart. That's why if you join an NLP prayer, the first 10, 15 minutes, we're thanking God. Because it's an anchor. It's an anchor. It's an anchor. Thank you, sir. It's an anchor. Why is it an anchor? When the new thing's coming, I keep looking at what God has done. I have strength to face what is coming. So, when David saw Goliath, everybody said, he's so big, we can fix him. David said, he's so big, I can't miss him. And Saul said, my God, you're going you're to die. He said, don't you understand? The God that killed the bear. See Thanksgiving. The God that killed the lion. The God that killed the tiger. He said, the same God will take down this on second side for listen. If you can take time and count your blessings. If you can take time and count your blessings. And see what the Lord has done. You will be shocked. Let me just read a more scripture. And we'll close. Uh, count your blessing name them one by one Luke chapter 7 verse 36 Luke 7 verse 36 this is the story of a woman see what a woman did the Bible says in verse 7 this woman was a sinner she stood at his feet and was weeping and she took a box of alabaster oil broke it and washed his feet with tears and wiped it with tears with her, with her hair and kissed his feet and anointed it with ointment then everybody said ah how if just as a man of god how can i love a sinner to be using this expensive to wipe his feet and just christ called peter there are two people that owed a man money one owed him fifty thousand other owed him 15 million the master forgave the two of them he said who will be more appreciative peter said the one that's 15 million he said, that's the point. He said, the people that appreciate me much are those that have been forgiven much. He said, when you see what I'm not appreciative, it's not their fault. They've not realized how much I've done for them. So when you come to church and because you're a man and you're MD or so, so and so, you put your hands in your pocket and you can't pray God. I understand. Because you had a great, you have great parents, you had people that helped you. But some of us, the only place we can point to is the man up there. If not for God, where will we have been? Some of us, some of us, some of you have son names. You know son names? There are son names and there are son names. There are son names that kidnap son names. Praise God. <laughs> so by the virtue of your son name, you say, oh, what's your name? You say, my name is um, Abu Bakr. Uh, my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm Fulinsha. I'm, I'm, um, I'm maybe I'm Tunde Alakija. We'll respect you. That's name. What are you? I'm John Gates. We'll respect you. But some names? Even Google doesn't recognize it. <laughs> but see how far God has brought you. Listen to me. <laughs> oh, glory. To, are you here? Are you here? Oh, wow. This is... I don't want to read something to you. Is the camera man here? I, I wanted to come. Camera guy, come. This is what I want to read to you. Thanksgiving starts with memories. Daniel, come. Come quickly. There are many reasons I'm grateful as a pastor. But then I'll come. You want, you want to come with your wife? You yeah, come. She's really beautiful, so it's good to. You come, you come to the stage, don't worry. I'll tell you when you come on stage. 
Oh, you're looking at him. You didn't know it was him. Oh, they're all in church. Look at this guy. I've been pastoring since what year? Uh, 2010. 2010. Nobody knew him. You knew him on television. I knew him not having transport fare. That's how I knew him. He will come and I'm like, what do you do with your life? I will have this conversation. And you look at what the Lord, that's not the good man. Like, oh, oh. I come every Sunday. Don't say, oh, you know, now you say, oh. And have you seen this beautiful wife? So say, come, 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 come. You, you, you want, you, 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 because of, uh, okay, we know why. We, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Really. I understand. I understand. And look at him today. And those days in our Bagada church, you will walk for Mizio Shudio or Anthony. How, how long did he was? No, no, you, you I, I want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's actually used to be from uh, Medina Estate to. Yeah. I, I walk out where you're driving. My leg is bent. <laughs> but see what the Lord has done. Where's the camera guy? Come. Thanksgiving starts with what memories? I just wanted to remember. Thanksgiving starts with memories. Thanksgiving starts with memories. Then Thanksgiving is expressed in our givings. What do you give? When you have memories, fruits of your lips. Thank you, Jesus. Your dance. Thank you, Jesus. Your offerings. Thank you, Jesus. This is what I said. I said, the weight of your gift is a reflection of your, th- of your gratitude. Anybody can give a thousand or two thousand there. Anybody can sing. But the weight of your gift is a reflection of thanksgiving. This is what I wrote. Because I wrote the thanksgiving note to God this morning. You might want to do that when you get home. I don't read everything. I want to see all my thanksgiving. Just this area. I, do you have just this area? God, you try. Come here. Can you help me? And I said, thank you for exposing my whole note. I'm grateful. Can you just focus on this one? And I said, God, you try for me. Your boy, you try, oh, you shock me. I'm telling you, you know, and, and because thank God there's transfer now, as I just took my banking up. I said, Lord, I'm just, thank you. You try. Because I know me. I know me. God try for me. He did try for you. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Let's pray.